I was able to run the blink example on Arduino Uno Q and it only took me 3 hours. But blinking at least is boring. I'm going to show you step by step how you can use Arduino Uno Q to measure an analog voltage and display it on a website. And the nice thing is you can update this value in real time. Alright, let's jump right in. Let's open Arduino App Lab. My Arduino Uno Q is connected using USB. So I have both options. I can connect via USB or use Wi-Fi to connect to the board. I will use USB because it's more stable. The Wi-Fi reception is not that good on that board. And I had some issues. So hopefully USB will be more stable. I see all of the examples. That's nice. But I want to create a new app. So I click on my apps. And there is no apps. I will create a new app and I will call it ADC website. And I'm super happy about it. I connected my potentiometer to 3.3 volts on one side, ground on the other side, and the output is connected to analog zero. We have sketch.ino. This is what you are already familiar with if you used Arduino in the past. And this will run on the STM microcontroller on this board. And we also have main.py. This is Python code running on the Qualcomm chip that runs Linux on the same board. In order to display data on the web server, we need our microcontroller to measure this analog voltage, then send it over to the Linux computer, which is the Qualcomm chip. And then the Qualcomm chip needs to host the website and update the value. All right, so let's start with the microcontroller, the STM. How can we send data from the STM to the Qualcomm chip? We're not using serial.print. There is something new and it's called the Arduino router bridge. So let's include, we don't have to install this. This is already built in Arduino router bridge dot H. Inside of our setup, just like with serial, we also need bridge begin and then inside of loop, I would like to take a measurement and send it to the bridge. The bridge is this connection between the microcontroller and the Linux computer. Bridge dot notify. And you can think of it a little bit like serial print, but you can give it a name or you have to give it a name for this data that you're going to send to the Linux computer. And I will call it ADC value because this is an ADC value. Then my data will be analog read A0. We get the analog value and we send it to the bridge and it's called ADC value. After we do that, we will wait for one second and then we will do it again. This is the only job of our STM. Our STM doesn't have to do anything else. So I will use delay and it will be blocked for the rest of the time. It won't do anything else. We will just take a measurement, send it to the bridge, wait for one second, and then take the next measurement, send it to the bridge. This is all it does. And now we need the Python script on the other side to take these measurements. So let's remove all of this here and let's import the necessary module, which is from Arduino dot app utils import app and bridge. This is required to get the connection to our microcontroller. And now we can call bridge dot provide. If the bridge provides us with something called ADC value, then I would like to call a function called ADC value callback. And of course I need to define this function. So let's define a function called ADC callback and there will be a parameter called ADC value and it's an integer value. And inside of this function, for now I will just print the ADC value. Now this is the Python language. It's something completely different. It's not compiled, it's interpreted. It looks different. If you're interested in learning Python, let me know in the comments. Maybe I can do some videos about it. Now the last thing I want to do is 
call app.run. And now it's time to run this thing and see if it works. A few moments later. This takes forever. So we get a number between zero and 1023. But that's not a website. That is the output of this Python script running on my board here. I would really like to have a website that shows me this number here. So how can we do that? If we go back to the editor, I can add some bricks. And one of these bricks is called web UI HTML. This is used to host websites. So let's add this brick. It also shows me some examples on how to use this brick. I'm interested in send message. Let's copy this and go back to the Python script. I would like to send a message to our web client. Now there is no website yet, but there will be. And the Python script should update the value on the website. So I will add this stuff here. And this part is already imported, so we can remove it. UI send message. That is the part that I'm interested in. I don't want to send it on connect. I want to send it every time we get a new value here. So let's edit here and I will call it ADC value and the data is ADC value. So every time the Linux computer gets a new ADC value, this function is called, it will print the ADC value. We can remove this. We don't need this anymore, but it will also call ui.send message and then send the ADC value to the web client that is hopefully connected. Let's see. But we don't have a website yet. So let's create a website. Let's create a new folder. How does that work? Okay. Let's create a new file. Oh. Let's create a new file called assets slash index.html. That didn't work. Okay. <laughs> Let's create a new folder called assets. And inside of this folder, we create a new file index.html. Awesome. And here, I'll just write down test. Let's stop and run. 2000 years later. It opens a new website. Localhost. Interesting. It's connected via USB. Okay. Awesome. But I would like to see the ADC value here. How can we do that? Well, first we need an HTML template, empty page template. Now there is no syntax highlighting in HTML. I hope they will add it. And we don't need this. And I don't have a style sheet right now. Well, let's call it ADC website. The body will contain a diff box that has an ID of ADC value and in the beginning it's empty so let's run this again one eternity later now we get the website we have these two dashes and it has a name called adc website very nice how can we update the value in real time let's use socket io min JavaScript. So you can download the JavaScript files, of course, or you use the hosted version. This is what I'm going to use here. So we will just include this. It will download the JavaScript from this website here, but we need some more script here. First, we need our socket. Let's 
socket.on if we get a d c value then we call a function with this data and inside of this function we will update the content of the website to this data so we need to update this element here and the way this works in javascript is document.get element by id and my id is adc value and now i can access the text content of this object and i update it to data and that's it without syntax highlighting this is very hard to code yeah let me guess something went wrong ah okay this is the problem i have app.run right here this, this we need to remove this we have app.run here so this blocks our code this is amazing so now as you can see when i change the voltage this number changes as well it takes one second to update but this can be changed how can we increase the speed well we go to the sketch and then reduce the delay let's reduce it to 100 milliseconds now we get a very quick response Of course, you can make it more beautiful by adding CSS Whoa, that's very big <laughs> Awesome, it's a little bit too big, but you get the idea. So what could we do with this? I think we could build an Arduino Uno Q oscilloscope, a poor man's oscilloscope that is accessible using a website. That would be awesome. Maybe a signal generator as well. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. If this video was helpful, please like, subscribe and hype. I would like to share this on GitHub, but I have no idea how I can save it to my computer because right now this is stored inside of my board. If it dies, all of this data dies with it. I'm sure it's very simple. I guess I have to read the manual. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.